Borussia Dortmund will take on the challenge of Borussia Mönchengladbach in the first week of March for progress in the DFB Pokal. The two clubs have already met in the German Bundesliga, BVB claiming the bragging rights in the first meeting courtesy of goals from Gio Reyna and Erling Braut Holland. Die Borussen took revenge for their 3-0 humbling with a 4-2 reversal. Holland again scored a brace, but it was cancelled out by Nico Elvedi in the first half. Rami Bensabaini and Marcus Turam hit the back of the net in the second half to take home the plaudits. The quarter-final meeting between the two Bundesliga top four contenders will be extra contentious. It has nothing to do with the past meetings, but about the coming campaign. Marco Rosa will be in the dugout for Borussia Dortmund, starting from the 2021-22 campaign, the announcement made with 13 games still left in the current campaign. The Signal Iduna Park hierarchy believes Rosa is the right man to take the reins of caretaker Edin Terzic after the sacking of Lucien Favre. The fact that he will come up against his future employers despite being with his current employers has raised a few eyebrows. This isn't the first time in the history of German football or Borussia Dortmund that the subject of untimely announcements or conflicts of interest will surface. BVB were on the receiving end of similar news ahead of the 2012-13 UEFA Champions League final. Bayern announced the upcoming signing of Mario Goetze, which clouded the environment ahead of the year-end European club football's extravaganza. While Goetze's departure was sudden, the Rosa announcement had been in the making for quite some time. The former Mainz 05 player had been on his way out and his decision has been an open secret in German sporting circles. Mönchengladbach fans are understandably saddened by the impending loss of the man who made little note of the Rheinland derby against Cologne. After all, Rosa had transformed the club's fortunes and turned them into genuine top four challengers with a brief title attempt sandwiched in between. Such has been the outpour that the fans forgave him for the derby loss. He had entrenched himself in the hearts of the fans, who only had glowing words to say about him. We would very much like to build a monument dedicated to you at the end of your time with us. We very much appreciate that it was possible at all to walk through a stretch of the club's history with you. The values, the passion and the will to win which you transmit to our team strike a chord with us and make us dream. The defection to Dortmund will not be taken lightly by the fans, who are still sour about Marco Reus' departure to the Signal Iduna Park after the 2011-12 campaign. On paper, Rosa's decision can be understood. He's following the trajectory of his mentor Jurgen Klopp. The current Liverpool manager was a Mainz player, worked his magic at a number of different clubs before taking the Dortmund role, the second biggest club in Germany after Bayern Munich. At Dortmund, he will get the spotlight he couldn't get at Mönchengladbach. If the 44-year-old harbours ambitions of coaching in the other top leagues of Europe, it can truly be the stepping stone that he craves. However, it won't be easy. Dortmund are a club in transition. Under almost any other circumstances, the move would have been considered a logical step up. But these aren't normal circumstances, and it's fair to question whether moving from Gladbach actually is a step up. After 21 Bundesliga match days, both clubs are six points adrift at the top four. Qualification for next season's Champions League is a distant dream for both clubs, which won't be realised by the end of the campaign. Dortmund will be severely handicapped in the transfer market and there's a good chance that they'll be unable to compete to get players of the right fit. This is just one part of the equation, as there certainly would be high-profile departures from the club. Jadon Sancho and Erling Holland remain in the crosshairs of all top European clubs. Sancho will probably return to England, as Manchester United again qualify for the Champions League. Holland has a rapport with Rosa after playing under him at RB Salzburg. But will he want to play in the Europa League? is a question that needs to be answered. Their flight is almost certain and will destabilize the club irrespective of who comes in the summer to replace them. Apart from the club's stars, there's uncertainty about the core team. It's reaching the end of its cycle and needs to be reimagined. Mats Hummels will be out of contract next year and the club will need the stability and experience that he brings. The midfield hasn't lived up to the asking as Axel Witzel, Thomas Delaney and Emre Can have struggled to impose themselves. Julian Brandt remains mercurial, while Gio Reyna and Yusufa Mokoko need time to fulfil their potential. To top it all off, Marco Reus can't be relied upon. The dressing room is not the only area that needs to be reviewed. There have been news of significant movement behind the scenes. Both CEO Hans-Joachim Watzke and sporting director Michael Zork might be moving on. Captain Sebastian Kehl, who is currently head of professional football, might be given greater responsibility, but how he fares remains to be seen. This is the situation that Rosa will be inheriting at the Signal Iduna Park. No Champions League, prodigious talents leaving, the core of the team past their prime, and long-standing pillars of the club ready to say their goodbyes. 
the Leipzig native will be in for a rude awakening. Irrespective of the dynamics of the move, given Rose's turnaround at Borussia Park, the Dortmund faithful can't be faulted for dreaming. His footballing brain is one which masterminded RB Salzburg's march. In the city of Mozart, he first led the youth team to the UEFA Youth League title in 2016-17. During this run, his boys left the prestigious academies of Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona and finally Benfica to hold their dominion. This was followed by more success with the Salzburg first team. The Leipzig native took over from Oscar Garcia in the 2017-18 season and followed up by winning the Austrian league. In Europe, he took the Austrian team to the UEFA Europa League semi-finals. In this journey, he managed a famous round of 16 victory over his soon-to-be employers. By the time he stood up and left to make his mark in German top-flight football, he boasted an Austrian Bundesliga record of 2.34 points per game as a coach. The step up to the German Bundesliga from its unfancied neighbours was expected to be difficult, but he proved that he was up to the task. He made the 2019-20 season a special season for Die Borussen. Gladbach were 23 points away from the first position the season before. For this team, a top six finish was deserving, but they were transformed into title challenges. His team put on an amazing show with a limited budget against teams like Dortmund, RB Leipzig and Bayer Leverkusen. He's managed this by adopting to a variety of systems during his reign, and similar forays could be followed at the Zignale Duna Park. Observing Gladbach's 2019-20 campaign, one can't pigeonhole them into one single way of playing. Rosa studies his opponents thoroughly before deciding how his team will set up against their rivals. They have multiple formations in the Bundesliga, from the 4-4-2 diamond to lining up with a back three. However, they've settled into the 4-2-3-1, which balances their attacking instincts and allows defensive solidity. In possession, Rosa likes to employ the 11th man philosophy. The goalkeeper starts the possession dynamics, a pretty common concept in modern football when building from the back. Jan Sommer had the fourth highest XG build-up across goalkeepers in the top five leagues, which is even more impressive when one considers that Mönchengladbach only enjoyed just 51.5% of possession in their Bundesliga outings. Sommer's statistics can't be considered an anomaly, despite the fact that his team doesn't enjoy as high possession stats as the other dominating sides. This is also evidenced by the Swiss international having the second highest number of touches per game amongst Bundesliga goalkeepers and is ranked second in the most number of passes completed per game with 37. After using the goalie as the base of his attacks, Rosa's teams like to have numerical superiority in their third during build-up play. Mönchengladbach used Sommer to play out from the back and the goalkeeper had support from the centre-backs and midfielders to give him passing options. The objective of the play is to maintain greater numbers than the rivals. Alongside the centre-backs, the two central midfielders of the various formations help achieve this. In the 4-2-3-1, a common movement observed was the two centre-backs being supplemented by one of the central midfielders to create a back three, converting the 2-2 into a 3-1, which helped create triangles and better passing options between the five players. At the other end of the pitch, Rosa likes to create central overload with his attackers, this assists in progressing the ball from the middle third into the final third. Mönchengladbach likes to use both central and wide lanes, and like his formation selection, this too depends on the situation. If they want to take the central route, they'll play it directly to one of the four attackers, namely the two wing options, the number 10 or the striker, which further leads to combination play between them. All of this is made possible with a central midfielder dropping deep and allowing free space for the attackers to drop in the central areas to receive the ball. This is why their preferred four attackers dominated the lion's share of scoring and creating. Between Marcus Thuram, Alassane Pli, Patrick Herrmann, Lars Stindl and Briel Mbolo, there were 38 goals and 30 assists with each of them having more than five goals each. Erling Holland will continue to score, but expect increased outputs from his supporting cast next year. That is, if he stays. Dortmund must have had more extensive analytical work done on his playing styles. They also have great knowledge of their players and where they're comfortable. In addition, their targets must have been decided last year, with plans being shelved given the impact. With Lucien Favre gone, Rosa will be giving his input on the players that he wants to bring in. BVB is a step up even with 81,365 empty seats at the Zignali Duna Park. After establishing himself at Borussia Park, the expectation at Rosa will be to deliver, especially given his links to the Dortmund great Jurgen Klopp. 
His personal feats at RB Salzburg and Borussia Mönchengladbach only increased the weight of expectations.